Hello sewing people of the internet. This is a video I've kind of been meaning to make for a long time, but most of the time I make videos based on projects that I need to do. I don't like to force uh, a topic uh, into happening. I make videos of things that I need to do, and I need to do this, so I'll show you. I made some prototypes of this thing, and I'm not really gonna go into detail about what this thing is. Um, and uh, in my haste, I failed to do a good job of doing some reverse stitching at the beginning of this seam, and the stitching has come loose and I need to fix it. In order to take it apart and fix it, I'd have to take the thing completely apart, and I'm not doing all that. So I'm gonna show you how you can repair stitching that's come loose when you don't have access to the back. The, the back of this is inside this thing, so. So I'll show you a way that I fix these. Before I get started with that, if you are uh, familiar with the controversy and kind of my views on the Sailrite Ultrafeed machines versus the clones or copies or variants or whatever you want to call them, um, I've had a lot to say on the matter, but I've never actually had one of the copy clone things. Uh, well, I have one now, and I'm going to be making a video comparing these two. So if you're interested in the differences between these machines, if you're watching this in real time, that video should be coming up in the next week or two. Oh, and also at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about a comment that I got that was really dumb, and uh, I just want to talk about it. All right, let's get started. So to do this repair, I'm going to use this circular or curved needle. You can see the it's a regular needle with an eye, but it's obviously in this circular shape, and I'll show you how we use it. I apologize in advance. This camera is terrible uh, about, well, I'm terrible at operating this camera and keeping it in focus at different distances and stuff, so a lot of this is going to go out of focus. I apologize. I've prepared this needle by passing a thread through the eye of the needle and then tying the ends of the thread so I have two strands. I have two strands of thread coming off of the needle. And now I'm going to go to a part of the stitching that is intact and begin the repair stitching from an intact part of the stitching. I'm using a little pair of pliers uh, because this neoprene is thick and pretty hard to penetrate. If you're using a lighter weight fabric, it might be better to use your hands these pliers will scratch up the sides of this needle that could eventually cause damage to the fabric or the thread. Uh, you could also maybe tape off the jaws of the pliers, but I'm not. I'm going to go into an existing hole and then come out the next hole for this first stitch. When I pull the needle out of the hole, I want to bring it back and pass it in between these two strands of thread that basically form a loop. And just pull that snug. I'm go ahead and trim this ends of the knot off. So now I want to go back in the same hole that I went in, but this time I want to go two holes down in the direction that I'm sewing, and then I'm going to come back one hole. And I'll continue that pattern, go two holes, come out second hole, and go in one hole back. Two holes down, one hole back.
each time I insert the needle, I'm being careful not to over penetrate and go all the way out the back side, but I do want to go through the layer beneath the top layer so that I'm actually sewing that top layer to the piece. So I'm at basically what's going to be my last stitch. So I've gone in this hole. I've come out at the end of the stitch line. And I'm going to pull that out. And that'll form a stitch between here and here. And then I'll just come back to this hole and back out the same end hole again to finish the stitch. And so now I'm in that last hole, and I'll just come out the hole that the thread is coming out now to form the last stitch. And now before I pull this all the way out, I have this loop. I'm going to go around and through the loop twice. And pull it tight. I'm not going to singe the trimmed ends of the thread down because painful experience has taught me that it's way too easy to burn or melt this neoprene or the fabric coating of it. So this is going to be good enough. This is just a functional repair. This is a rapid prototype. It's not meant to be uh, perfect. So this is good enough. So that's a way that I sometimes fix top stitching that I, I'm not able to get to the back of or not able to get into a sewing machine without a lot of disassembly. There's probably better ways to do it. It's entirely possible that some of what I did is not correct, but uh, it's worked for me, so maybe that's a tool to put in your toolbox. These curved needles are pretty commonly available. You can find them at the big box sewing stores or obviously online, but a uh, pretty good thing to have uh, in case you need it. Uh, sometimes doing a repair like that is a much more efficient way of fixing something. Okay, so before I close out the video, I wanted to address a comment that I received recently. Um, I realize that it is best not to engage with internet trolls but I am only human, and sometimes uh, it just annoys me that people presume that they know anything about me or what I'm doing and that they have the right to tell me how wrong I am. So I'm going to respond, and maybe I shouldn't, but I will. I, I will leave the person's name out of it. You can find it in the comments if you look for it, but, uh, uh, you know, maybe they'll think better of it and delete that comment, so I'll leave their name out of it. But... Their comment was on a video about this Conso 225 sewing machine that I picked up for a steal uh, and refinished and put it in another table and put another motor on to make it work. Uh, their comment was, you don't need it. You're a typical guy buying more tools than you need. You have an addiction that is taking machines off the market for those who genuinely need them. Well, okay, so first... Um, let me address the you don't need it part of that comment. How do you know what I do and do not need? Uh, I've addressed in another video that I don't make a living sewing, but I do occasionally make money. The subject of the video that you just watched on this repair, uh, that was a paid project that I did. So I do this not necessarily for a living, but it is part of my revenue. And another part of my revenue is YouTube videos, and I need sewing machines, sometimes as content for videos, and sometimes to do projects with. So, uh, maybe I don't need that particular machine, but I do need more than one sewing machine. This machine is also a backup to my main sewing machine 
in the event that it has a failure and I need those capabilities while I'm repairing the main one. So you don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I do need this machine or something like it. Secondly, whether I need it or not, there's no shortage of sewing machines. If someone out there needs a sewing machine to run their business or for their hobby or for therapy or whatever, there's plenty of sewing machines out there. This machine was on the market for weeks. I watched the ad for a while. Uh, that's kind of my typical modus operandi anyway because I don't like to impulse buy stuff. So I kind of, you know, watch it for a little bit and see if somebody else gets it. And this one sat for weeks and nobody bought it. Uh, I drove 45 minutes away on a cold, rainy day, went to a warehouse that I was a little bit afraid to go into because I thought maybe I was going to be the victim of a serial killer. And uh, this thing was sitting in a warehouse that had been abandoned in for like four years or more. It was wet. It was rusty. The motor was shot. The table was a complete piece of trash. No one was clamoring for this machine. If somebody had been standing behind me saying, oh man, I really want that machine, I would have gladly let them buy it. Uh, so I saved this machine from going into the dumpster and I gave the person that was selling it a little bit of money so they got something out of it. Everybody was happy, except for the commenter apparently. The majority of my machines come from thrift stores or garage sales. The reason people sell things at garage sales and donate them to thrift stores is that they don't want them anymore and they're not worth a lot of money. That's just the way it is. So do I have more sewing machines than I need? Absolutely, yes I do. I also have more socks than I need and I have more dinner plates than I need and you probably do too. So, lay off. I've sold a few of the machines I've collected over the years and I've given away a couple of them and I'll probably be doing that again in the future, both of those things in the future. Anyway, my point being, dear commenter, uh, you have no idea what you're talking about and maybe you should reserve your typing skills for talking about things that you have more knowledge about or maybe, you know, just mind your own business. For the rest of you, thanks so much for being part of the channel. Thanks for watching and liking and subscribing and all those great things. And more stuff's coming soon, so see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.